Hace unos días, como jefe de Estado, procedí a solicitar una investigación urgente dado las graves denuncias que me llegaron a las manos. My name is Jose Pereira. I am a former oil and gas executive. I'm one of that simple sex. Well, the thing is that during that time, there was the Trump administration here in the U.S., and they were imposing a lot of sanctions on the regime of Venezuela that they declared that it was illegitimate. So they were trying to replace that regime. They were imposing a lot of uh, political sanctions to the country and to the people, and even they did a, a, a petroleum ban. So we inadvertently get caught in the, in the middle of that situation. So there was, it was a total mess that I'm gonna tell uh, in my book, by the way. I'm gonna say the truth of the matter that will happen because the truth hasn't been told. I have been hearing the opposition in Venezuela and the government of Venezuela and even hear the U.S. government saying things. Some are not totally accurate, some are totally lies. I'm going to say exactly what really happened. We, we, we were caught, we were put in uh, by the counterintelligence and uh, military police of Venezuela called the DGC. That police put us in a military basement, uh, like a three-story basement in a military installation. It was a dungeon, it was a total nightmare. All of these guys were really sociopath. They were maybe making daily tortures and physical and mental and, and physical torture. A lot of things we saw there. We were put in a very confined place called the submarine. So when, when we stayed there, we stayed like around 10 months, totally isolated. We didn't know what was going on. Uh, uh, we stayed like 10 months without no communication with the family. So they wanted to break us. There was no window. There, there, was, was, uh, there was no running water. Didn't have fresh water. We were drinking bad water. I began to have a severe uh, stomach problem. I went to the uh, pneumonia. I was sputting blood. So we were really thinking that we were gonna die there. Really, really in a bad situation. When I begin to receive the food and the medicine, at some point I begin to smuggle letters because I, I needed communication to, to my wife. So I, I took the risk. It, it, maybe I could, could have died, but I took the risk. I begin to smuggle letters in the trash cans. And that, that was effective because I, I received, I sent a letter and like two or three days later, I received a letter from my wife replying me, and we begin to do it like that, back and forth with writing, and, and, and it began to be a routine. Every two, every three days we were writing, we begin to develop a, like a secret code. That secret code uh, was in the case they discovered the letters. So it became really my memoir. So when I came back, my wife has compiled 1,000 letters. So she had put it in Word, so when I decided to go back to the letters and, and compile them, it's, that, that's the way I wrote my book. So you will see and, and feel in the book that the, 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 the process I was going through, that all, all why I was suffering in the moment, because you will see it there. And, uh, and you will see also the, how it will be the evolving in time, because at some point we decided to go to a survival mode. So, so when when we figured out what was going on with with, with us, uh, and our family began to to decided to not not to stay quiet because they were asking the U.S. government was asking to them to be silent and they decided to go big to the press. So you will see a lot of news at the time in the major media. They went to Fox, they went to CNN, they went to ABC, CNBC, CNBC CBS. AFP, AP, Bloomberg, Reuters, uh, Time Magazine. They went to all the major Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, New York Times. You can see news of us all over the world. At that point, the, the, the pressure was so big that they decided to put us together. For the first time in like one year, we, we were put it together in a, like in a closet. We were literally living in a closet, a 100 square feet closet. We were stay there 
almost the, the rest of our confinement, more than three years. More than three years without no windows, the, 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 the door totally locked all the day. And at the end, uh, well, we decided to go to a survival mode and we decided to survive. And, uh, we began to do a daily routine. By that time we had books. So I began to read a lot, and th there was a book that came to me uh, from a guy that was a survivor during the World War II in the, in the Nazi concentration camp of Auschwitz. His name is Victor Franco, and the book is A Man and the Search of a Meaning. That guy was saying in that book that the people that survive this type of ordeal in prison is because they have a meaning in their life. So we found that their meaning in their life was being sane in body, soul, and spirit, and come back okay to our families so so we really begin to work hard on, on that and we did it on a daily basis why i decided to write my book i want to set the record right that, that what really happened there i'm going to tell the truth i want that the people that write my book inspiring that any adversity in life they can survive it so this is going to be my legacy for the world so in the future in the future the generations to come they will read my book as part of this story and as part of the way i decided to transcend my early thank you very much